The Goat Isles is back with 10 undrafted rookies that not only made their team's roster, but look like absolute Find it's a really good undrafted free agent class. I also noticed two trends about this group of guys, and it could actually make an impact on the future of the NFL. We'll reveal that throughout this video. Uh, let's get to the rookies. First up, we got the Steelers undrafted rookie Beanie Bishop, who is actually listed as their starting nickel corner so far on their depth chart. You know, maybe he doesn't he doesn't start, and maybe he does, but it looks like he'll get some playing time. And this is a guy that actually transferred through multiple schools, going from Western Kentucky and playing very well in the Conference USA, going to Minnesota, playing fairly well there. Minnesota's been pumping out some good DBs. And then he went to West Virginia, where he played outside corner, and he was pretty solid there, playmaker. Just maybe a little undersized, which kind of got beat by the, the bigger body guys down the field along the sideline. So it actually makes sense for him to play that slot role where actually he could thrive. Uh, he's really good in zone and man. I'd say equally effective zone and man. A little bit better off coverage, which you typically don't press from the slot. So this is a guy that was, a, as a prospect, pretty good outside corner. But, man, at NFL standards when it comes to size and maybe sometimes he got beat in situations that kind of exposed that. So people kind of got cold because of that. But moving him to the slot makes a lot of sense so we'll see if he ends up starting for the Pittsburgh Steelers or making an impact. I definitely think he could this year. Next, we have an obvious one. I mean, when, when Leonard Taylor went undrafted, we knew that this was kind of a sneaky pickup for the Jets. He was a stud earlier in his career at Miami, and they kind of had him playing out of position this last year, which resulted in him, you know, his play kind of declining a little bit. Well, we knew the talent was in him since the start as a guy that probably should have got drafted. He played very, very well in preseason. Uh, was was constantly getting pressure from the interior, which is big in today's NFL. And the Jets are pretty loaded on defense. They got legit starters, but the depth at that position, they needed it. And they get a big one here in Leonard Taylor, who obviously made the roster and, and looks the part. So that's that's one you get really excited about. It was a, definitely a talented one that everyone knows about. Uh, and it kind of he kind of lived so far, lived up. Uh, to those expectations. Let's see it in the regular season now. We're not done with the Jets. Braden McGregor, I'm blocking his name. There it is. Uh, the Michigan standout defensive end. And Michigan was so good. They were so deep. They had so much talent around them that the defensive ends got kind of swept under the rug, if you will. They got hidden a little bit with Jalen Harrell going in the seventh round of the Titans, and he looks like a stud. He's probably their third best pass rusher. And then McGregor goes undrafted. The Jets get him, and he is lighting it up in preseason. And they do have a number of good players on the defensive line, but Hassan Reddick is still holding out. I don't know that situation. So this actually could be, McGregor could be a key rotational guy. And it's one of those guys, you look at the past, the guys that have a better NFL career than they did in college. He seems to kind of follow that pattern where he just had really good players around him. Like the interior of Michigan was insane elite where, you know, maybe there's just not enough sacks to go around for that rest of that group. So, uh, th th I mean, that team was just that deep, that good, that complete. So uh, with, with uh, you know, learning in an NFL program like the Jets with good players, he actually could become possibly uh, a better NFL player in terms of production. And he had a really good preseason, so let's see if he sticks on that roster uh, and maybe get some playing time in year one. So the Jets did really good in undrafted free agency. Now a fan favorite, it seems, and Carson Steele, the Chiefs running back slash fullback, what he was in college as well. So the beauty is he could play both. They used him more like a running back in preseason where he lit it up. He, he shows athleticism, but really yards after, the, after contact, and I think that's where kind of what made him a fan favorite. There they did. The Chiefs did sign Samaj P. Ryan yesterday, so maybe that hurts him in terms of the running back rotation, the running back depth chart. But again, he could be a running back, fullback. He's listed as as the fullback on the Chiefs roster, so it's a guy that's going to be maybe a lot of fun for them. He was a lot of fun in preseason. We'll wait and see a early stage for all these, but something we can revisit during the year. But like Beanie Bishop, the first guy we talked about, a transfer. He was at Ball State where he looked really good, went to UCLA, looked really good. Now at this early stage, looking like a steal for, for the Chiefs. Former Illinois receiver Isaiah Williams has dominated the preseason for the Detroit Lions. Another one that seems like a fan favorite, at least in Detroit for Detroit fans. 
he lit it up. He was just constantly open, using showcasing his speed, his, his athleticism, just making big time plays. You hear the coaching staff, the front office, Brad Holmes raving about him, and they have added some receivers: Tim Patrick, Allen Robinson. Totally different type of so maybe it knocks him down the depth chart, but totally different type of receiver. So I think him being kind of behind the. Jamison Williams, Khalif Raymond, which both those guys get playing time. He's right behind those guys and him being with him being that type of receiver. So we actually can see him play. Maybe some returning upside as well. Just looked really good out there. And again, I think the staff thinks highly of him. Another player that was a transfer starting off his career in Washington, moving to Oregon, Taki Taimani of the Vikings looked really, really good in preseason for them. And they're a little lacking in terms of the depth of the D-tackle position they could use. Man, they can use, not only use depth, but guys playing as well alongside Harrison Phillips. And Taimani could be that guy. He can be behind Phillips, nose tackle type, or a defensive tackle type. So not only has he looked good, not only is he key depth, we could see him playing right away on Sundays. He looked legit, a physical specimen for the Minnesota Vikings. And like the Jets, the Vikings have two on this list as well. I mean, maybe they would even have Gabriel Murphy if he wasn't uh, injured right now. Short-term IR for him. but And yet, an, another transfer. And that's one of those trends I was talking about. A lot of these guys, and we're not done yet, on this video, a lot of the standout undrafted guys were transfers. So our team's going to take more of a look at that, those guys. Maybe they're sleeping on them because they didn't work out somewhere else. These guys balled out, at least so far. But Dwight McLaughlin which another guy I'm blocking his name, Dwight McLaughlin, was another guy that was kind of obvious that he was a really good pickup as an undrafted free agent. Uh, former LSU corner, like we talked about, a transfer, went to Arkansas, and he was a big-time playmaker for them. He always... You know, he's always able to read the quarterback and find the football and attack downhill. He seemed like a really good playmaker in zone coverage, which it's hard to find college kids like that because it's a little more, you have to a little more brains for that. Usually the college kids that are young, athletic, they're good in man coverage. So uh, he played very well, very well for the Vikings in preseason, uh, but not really a, a big time shocker there. And, and they've had some cornerback issues, so they could use a young guy stepping up as well, I definitely don't see him starting right away, especially since they they got Stephon Gilmore. But it's a guy uh, that that has some talent and should stick around. Raiders rookie linebacker Amari Gaynor might be one of the more overlooked guys of this whole process, the whole whole draft, undrafted free agency process. He looking at him at preseason, he looks like a natural. You know, you see the guy getting downhill, not missing tackles, show, showcasing athleticism and physicality. Looks like an absolute stud. Yet another transfer to Florida State where he was a bigger name it felt like first year was injured second year played very well went to North Carolina played very well as well maybe overshadowed by Cedric Gray who's dealing with an injury right now but looks like a, a legit find for the Raiders and they're a little thin in terms of depth or big names at the linebacker position uh, you know so he's the guy that actually could play for them right away so really excited about him uh, not done talking about linebackers in this video and not talk, done talk, believe it or not not done talking about transfers Omar Spates is a big one to watch. The Rams moved on from Ernest Jones in a big reason, a couple reasons. They don't love paying linebackers. They don't value the position a ton. They feel like they can find them later in the draft or undrafted. You know, so there's a big reason. Another big reason is they can afford to move on from Ernest Jones because they have guys to step up. That number one guy that can step up to watch is rookie Omar Spates. Another transfer played at Oregon State, played very well, and went to LSU and played very well. Another one that people really slept on. Like, you're kind of going now like, okay, yeah, it kind of makes sense that he looks pretty good. Uh, but he, he looks like an absolute stud. The Rams are excited about him. I'd watch for him to start. And yet we see another linebacker and kind of what I just said and kind of where the NFL is heading linebacker position being devalued, being valued less and less. Teams are waiting to draft them. They're paying them less unless you're a specific type of guy. Uh, you're, you're like the Rams. They're moving on from good ones because they believe they can find one uh, in a pretty good value spot, whether it's late in the draft, undrafted, you know, and uh, th that's kind of where the NFL is heading. So you might be able to, Get your starting linebackers in via undrafted free agency, which is pretty crazy. But again, I think that's kind of the trend where things are heading right now. And the Rams are the prime example here. But re really watch out for Omar, Omar Spates. Uh, he, he's uh, 
I, again, I think he's probably going to start. He's at least going to play, and he looks like he's fairly solid. He played at two big schools and played very well there. So interesting one to keep an eye on. One more for you guys, another linebacker, Muma Jongmeda from the Bengals. I mean, he's everyone's talking about him right now. He really stood out in preseason, another linebacker flying around the football field, kind of overlooked from Wisconsin. Wisconsin was always known for like those old school linebackers. In the last few years, as teams are – dropping the value of the position Wisconsin guys have kind of been stolen uh, you know either later in drafts or undrafted people sleeping on them there's so many in the league that recently came in the league and here you have another one and it's another great example of the linebacker position and how you can find gems late or undrafted and why teams are not paying them massive money the Bengals paid both their starting linebackers by the way they're pretty good value deals for both Logan Wilson and Jermaine Pratt, who are pretty solid linebackers. And that's a reason maybe we won't see the preseason stud here a ton because teams are using three linebackers less and less, but the Bengals will at times. So if we see a third linebacker on the field for them, it definitely could be Zhang Mehta, uh, who, again, really stood out for the Bengals, not just in preseason games, but kept hearing really good things about him in practice, you know, training camp. So uh, this was a really good class. There's more stud guys in this. There is a long list of undrafted free agents that made their team. That's awesome to see. Uh, but again, really good class. And and we ta- we saw the trends, like un- uh, trans- transfers, people maybe sleeping on them just because they didn't, they couldn't stick in one spot. They didn't work in the first spot. Or do, are they scheme dependent? thinking too much and then we see how you can really get get good value in steals especially at the linebacker position uh, in undrafted free agency so um, really cool stuff something we can revisit during the year along with you know drafted rookies like who it looks legit who are the top rookies who looks like steals Uh, so really excited to cover that as well as our weekly picks power rankings and much more during the nfl season so make sure to subscribe to notifications on so you don't miss any of that but thank you for watching gonna do it goodbye